Hey guys, today we're going to talk about when to buy conspiracy cards, uh, mostly singles. If you're going to buy a box, then the box should be able to pay for itself right now. That, of course, will change within, you know, even the week, even next week that could change. So if you wanted to buy singles, now is not the time to buy a conspiracy to singles. And I'm going to use this card as an example of what when would be the time. So when it first got out, which would be right now, during the pre-order phase, it was $60 pre-order, and then it just tanked. So within the first seven days, it tanked all the way down to $30, and then eventually it got a tad under $20, or close to $20. And what happens is when a set first comes out, people are going to make reviews of it, people will hype it, people will say, oh, this is the best card ever, it's amazing. In fact, that's has been happening since probably the beginning of Magic, uh, since the very beginning, at least as early on as beta, people were saying, oh, this card is amazing. Did you look at the Lord of the Pit? Wow. And you, you got to resist buying these cards at this point in time. You just got to wait at least a week. If you wait at least a week, the price of a lot of them will plummet by, you know, 50%, maybe more. And at that point, then you can look at it and say, okay, I don't, I want to play with these cards, so I'll buy them now. But the ideal point, the lowest point would be after two sets into it. And I've seen this pattern in every single Magic set. There is a lack of interest. No one else wants to play it. No one wants to draft it. People are not interested in, in the cards, individual cards anymore. And there are more products in the market. So supply is extremely high at that point because all the product that 90% of the product that would ever be open has already been opened. And that would be the time to buy. So I'm saying to buy this set if you're interested in singles and you have the time, you don't need the cards right now and you're more of a casual player, you can wait five months to buy this set. I believe it will be at the lowest point. Five months in, as you can see, after we got into Collins of Tarkir, October 14th, it just tanked in, in price. So that was two sets ago. This is kind of a weird set because it is a summer set. But that's the majority of cards are like that. They get extremely hyped, and then within the first week or first 10 days, they drop a ton in price then they slowly drop and continue to drop uh, until that two set period until the two other sets have come out and then they will slowly rise uh, someone will try a buyout which is very foolish and now they look extremely foolish trying to buy out uh, it looks like the midway of cons of Tark or dragons of Tarkir and origins uh, it looks like there was a buyout that spiked it to $50 and then it slowly went down until it was reprinted. And a, a side note about the reprint. Uh, this really signals to me that MTG Finance is dead. Like, as we know it. I don't know what's going to replace it. Like, when Sharking left, I was like, oh, well, Sharking's gone. And Sharking, if you guys are younger, uh, is when you trade a card. When people, before smartphones and people didn't... Our smartphones existed, but not everyone had one, or a lot of people didn't have one, and they didn't have good data plans. Uh, so even if you had a smartphone, your data plan was very terrible, and you couldn't waste your data on trying to get uh, magic prices, right? That's not... It would cost you more money to search for the price than the card is worth in trade. And anyway people would chart. They would take one card and trade it for another card of greater value. That period is over because we have smartphones. Like everybody I know has a smartphone and they can, you can figure out card prices instantaneously and there's no reason to guess. So back then people were just guessing at the price. And if you were a little better at guessing at the price, then you can make, that's how you would make your money as a grinder or a floor trader. Now we have a different scenario where speculating on prices and doing buyouts and it's essentially pretty certain if you're uh, able to buy out a card like star city games what did with the fetch lands yes the card will go up in price like uh, that's just logic so that now that period's over 
uh, and something else will replace it. I don't know. Maybe we'll be buying boxes of stuff, sealed stuff. Maybe we'll be buying bulk. I have no idea what's going to replace, you know, speculation uh, and MTG Finance. But I just know that for right now, this is the low point until somebody figures out something that will replace it. I'm sure at that point it will happen because I've seen sharking. I've seen I've lived through the sharking era of Magic. Uh, which was many many years probably like 10 years and then i've lived through the speculation and then more recently the buyouts of reserve list cards and i don't know what's going to replace it but if i had to guess i would assume it's bulk i assume at some point in time the amount of old magic cards you own for instance i have unlimited and those cards are completely worthless about a year or two ago but because I have so many of them, and now they became worth money because of the new format. Oh, I'm not going to discuss that right now. The 93-94 format. Uh, they suddenly, you know, a disrupting scepter or a tomb. That tomb card, which is worth like five cents. I, it's worth five cents, but now it's like TCG player $60. And you can actually trade it away for $60. And I went to GP Houston for experiment. And it turns out people were willing to buy for like $25, which you might be like, oh, that's like, at the time it was 80 so they offered 25 on it, and I didn't take it, but I should have, uh, because, wow, that's like insane. I mean, the card was like five, cent, five cents, and now you can buy this for $25. So I think bulk is where it is, and it might be, you know, it might just be a volume play that if you had a ton of older bulk cards, because the probability of you getting old cards in bulk is pretty common in my experience. And whoever has the most bulk cards has the best inventory, and they can, you know, I don't know, the tome of something spikes up in price. It's no longer five cents because I'm an eighty dollar card. That's still reasonable as in a um, making money from that because you got it for five cents. And the way bulk works is you have so much of it. You just have so much bulk. Anyway, this was a seven and a half minute rant. Bye.